John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life Romans 5 8 God commends his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us John 15 13 greater love has no has no one than this that a man should lay down his life for his friend so the death of Jesus further reveals to us the love of God so Jesus did not just endure the limitations of humanity as a demonstration of his love in incarnation he went further to demonstrate that love by dying on the cross for us so every time we speak about the cross it is not a wood where a man is hung every time we speak about the cross the first thing we are talking about is the revelation of God of God's love that God became man and it was God who hung on that cross naked making himself vulnerable so that in his death we might have life this is the first revelation of the death of Jesus Christ the manifestation of the love of God the second revelation of the death of Jesus Christ is the atonement for our sins if he didn't die the price would not have been paid because the Bible said the wages of sin is death so if death does not happen sin cannot be paid for it said without shedding of blood there is no remission of sin so when we speak about forgiveness as far as spirits are concerned it's not that i'm no longer angry with you i've forgotten what you did that's a joke see the actual sense is that spirits don't forgive there is no spirit that can forgive you forgiveness does not exist in the realm of spirits when the spirit tells you i've forgiven you it's because two things has happened number one that iniquity has been washed away the spirit is not seeing it and number two a price has been paid to appease for the anger of that spirit so in christendom what happened is called expiation and propitiation in expiation the blood of jesus washed away our sins so when god looks at us he doesn't see the sin if he sees it he will kill us that's why when our sin was put on christ christ died God does not see it. The blood of Jesus washed it away. He said, as the, not, the south is farther away from the west, he says, so have I separated. East is far, farther away from the west. He says, so have I separated your sins from you. So the blood of Jesus washed away our sins. So God does not see it. And then the anger that God had towards us as sinners, that anger was put on Christ. So when Christ was struck on the cross, as far as God was concerned, he was striking every sinner. So the cross of Jesus is a revelation of expiation and propitiation. This is why forgiveness became possible. Forgiveness became possible because Jesus took our penalty of death. Forgiveness became possible because the blood that was spilled washed away our sins. Glory to God. So this is the second significance of the death of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21, the Bible said he made him that was without sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So there was a substitutionary transaction that took place. He took our death, we took his life. He took our shame, we took his glory. He took our weakness, we took his strength. He took our death, we took his life. He took our humiliation, we took his exhortation. He took our weakness, we took his ability. Transaction was going on on the cross. So that everything that we are, he became and everything that he was we become this is why you are a new creation because of the death of Jesus Christ so when we talk about the crucifixion it's not about the wood it's about the substitutionary transaction and so the reason you come before God and you are confident that God is not angry with you is because once upon a time Jesus hung on the cross the whole anger of God was directed to Jesus Christ so when you come to God you come boldly not because you merit it but because Jesus merited it for you. Glory to God. And this is why we cannot but continually thank him. Every other thing we are doing now by grace will become the basis by which God will reward us in eternity. Glory to God. See, this is the foundation of the faith. Everything we do, there is a basis. But many don't know. They are going to deal with demons and they carry their own works as the advantage. Hey, you will suffer. How many people cast out devils in the Old Testament? Did you fast more than, do you fast more than them? Do you pray more than them? The technology of casting out devils, I'm not talking exorcism now, when you cooperate with one demon to interact with another demon, to exercise full authority over demons, 
unapologetically as a show of kingdom dominion began after the resurrection jesus did it and when he died we got the right to also do it and oh how the apostles love to cast out demons that's why when luke was writing he said the acts of the apostles they were acting dimensions acting people like paul didn't even need to say in the name of jesus anymore they sent handkerchief when the demons see they will know this handkerchief came from somebody that carried jesus and handkerchiefs were casting out devils if the handkerchief of paul is casting out devils and you are struggling to cast out devils you that carry the holy ghost then you don't have you don't know truth don't exhort devils and i know the place of principalities and i will explain it to you because there's a place where we wrestle not against flesh and blood we cast out devils because they don't have the right to possess men they are disembodied beings so when you come you, you exercise dominion glory to god we are living a defeated life and we think because we clothe ourselves with piety that's the fullness of christianity check jesus out they carried him to kill him they took him to the cliff of the mountain the bible said jesus walked through them and left and jesus stood and said this commandment have i received from my father no man taketh my life from me i have the power to lay it down and to take it up again that's dominion so christianity is not a defeated life in the name that you are serving god christianity is to manifest god's life live god's character exercise god's dominion carry god's presence and function by god's life so that when men see you truly they will say you are divinity expressed through humanity read your bible these things were manifested in types and shadows. Daniel was in Babylon. They were bigger than all the princes of Babylon. See, they are not trying to build value from things. No, a man's value is not in the multitude of his possession. But things run errands for us. The guy was out, outdoing witches, wizards, astrologers. That is the spirit of excellence. Even what they didn't study, they knew. And you find a Christian failing in school. When unbelievers are passing and he thinks Christianity is only about speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is important, but there is something that your life should demonstrate. You are the head only. You can't enter a class and fail. Why somebody else who does not have the mind of Christ is passing. But we have narrowed Christianity to our myopic understanding. We lost something in the garden. We lost the nature of God. We lost the character of God. We lost the dominion of God. We lost the presence of God. And we lost the life of God. This is what we must possess. You'll find people in the world falling in sin. Christians are also falling. When you talk, they say it's not easy. How did they survive in Babylon? That they were threatened, yet they didn't compromise. They threw them into the fire. They defied the fire. A Christian goes into the world and becomes an ambassador of corruption. So on one side, we are dying of poverty on another side we are dying of sickness on another side we are dying in sin because we don't know dominion why do you think the holy ghost came why do you think scriptures were given to you so that when you receive the deposit of life you will now possess everything that was lost the presence of god is not about church no the presence of god is your atmosphere that's your dwelling. So everywhere you go, you carry it like a Bible said, their shoe did not grow weary. Shoe grew with them. Their, their clothes didn't tear off for 40 years. Cloth was renewed every day. If cloth is renewed, is it body that will be sick? If shoe grew with them, is it food that will finish? That's the presence. The Bible said, he rebuked kings for their sakes. He said, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. If they entered a city, they dismantled the government there. They dismantled the army because there was a pillar of cloud and there was a pillar of fire. That's the presence. So when you show up, people paralyze because the dread of God is upon you. And you need to know the people they fought. Ha, go and read your Bible. The Bible says some of them were beastly. Men that look like tigers. Go and read about Sihon, the Amorite, king of Heshbon. Read about Og, the king of Basha. Their soldiers were warriors that were like beasts. If a man stood before you, if he talks, his voice is as deep as the roaring of a lion. And some of them had hairs on their body. And they were six feet, eight feet, twelve feet tall. If they slap you, you will faint. But this man entered those lands and defied those armies. They said, rise up, take up thy journey. Go beyond the sea, the, the river Anon. I have given unto you, Simon the Amorite, king of Heshbon. Contend.
dwelt with him and possessed the land. The land God gave them was a land that ten nations were dwelling in. The Hittite, the Perizzite, the Amorite, ten nations. And a people who had never fought, who were slaves for 430 years, showed up without bows, without arrows, without chariots. If they carry stone, that stone will be stronger than your spear. That's the presence. Oh, hospitals have given up on they will bring them and it will not take a miracle service even an usher will say stand up and it will be over a day we come when we will learn to governments of nations a day we come when when nations are under attack they will ask us for help go and look at the life of Abraham four kings took lot and they told Abraham your little nephew has been taken there was no preparation he took 318 train servants and ran after them. One family destroyed four kings. And he said, I don't need what they have. Take it back. Know that you don't say you made Abraham rich. That means Abraham was unapologetically rich. So rich that he didn't need the wealth of four kingdoms. Sit down. Let's do Bible study. And then carry so much power. That if you enter a city because you are there, demons will run out. Demons, they will advise themselves that this man is coming. Be a heavy duty. Somebody confessed one of the grandmasters of witches in Rwanda in Uganda. He said Maurice Arulo was coming into the city. They told them, leave the city 32 days before he came. Is it 32 days? I've forgotten. Over 30 days before he came, they said, Go far, take cover. Because the, what this man carries is a cloud. If he enters, if you are around the neighborhood, you'll be injured. And they say, when he leaves, don't come back until after 70 days. Because the weight of glory that he came with, the residue will still be in the nation. Be holy until your holiness convicts in us. Carry God's presence until the presence you carry change things even when you are not talking. And then carry so much life that if anything dies, you can restore it. Carry so much authority that when you are around, the will of God is enforced whether men like it or not. See, be so holy that if a sinner comes close to you on his own, he will start feeling guilty and repent. Not because you preached. Let holiness smoke out of you like fire. So much so that if you sit in a bus with somebody, the person will look at you and say, I'm sorry. Yesterday I fornicated. Please ask God to forgive me. What we are talking about then carry God's presence so much that when people come around you even when you don't pray they will leave and say like Laban told Jacob I have come to understand by divination divination that God bless me because of you so when they come into your atmosphere everything that is failing in their life will begin to work and they will know that is when they met you that is change carry so much life that if anything dies and you touch it it will return that's salvation Sit down for a moment. Hi. Ah, it's a body. It's a body. We, see, there are things we need to start crying for. We saw people carry packets of these things across time. The totality has been made available to those of us who are born again. So that we are supposed to manifest the fullness. And the manifestation we have is less than those who, didn't, who don't even have life. Who don't even have salvation and the Holy Ghost something is wrong but don't worry let's look at the facts if you have the fact you trade with it use prayer use uh, fasting use worship use meditation trade with it but after a short period of time when we converge come with your dimension it's a henceforth no we no man after the flesh let's hear that you went to government you came with so much favor they made you senator <laughs> and you entered the Senate immediately all the senators say you be majority leader <laughs> and you are changing things when you talk they say he has spoken see this is what those in darkness do somebody will chew to a stick and come and talk and nobody will argue 
because they gave into a stick from Indian Ocean. Meanwhile, you have the Holy Spirit. God dwells on your inside. You don't need a twin stick, sir. When you talk, God comes out. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit. They are life. When you talk, God comes out. Are you not supposed to be more dangerous than the chewers of twin stick? Somebody shout! Don't worry. You don't know what I'm doing to you now, no. I'm speaking into your dimension. That's what I'm doing now. I'm speaking into what you carry. Some of you will go to the office tomorrow. You'll discover you'll become like a lion. Because you see that the spirit of dominion has been stirred. Some of you will go to the office tomorrow. You'll discover that life would have risen on your inside. Somebody says sick. You say you can't be sick around me. And life will return. Some of you favor will come upon you. You will start changing things. In their millions you won't know. Because I am talking to your dimension. I prophesy over you. The weight of glory locked up on your inside. It manifests now. He said, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. So the Bible is saying, anybody who claims that he's a new creation must also live as what? Christ lives. That means lived. That means Christ has become our pattern. If you are not living like Christ, it means you are not living according to God's plan. He has become the pattern. That's the first significance of the sinless life of Christ. The second significance of the sinless Christ life of Jesus is that he affords him the right to become the perfect sacrifice because the sacrifice for sin must be without blemish if you study the old testament leviticus 16 verse 21 to 22 any lamb that is blemish cannot be the sacrifice so for jesus to qualify to be our atoning sacrifice he must live a sinless life so his sinless life number two qualifies him to be what our sacrifice so when i'm coming to god i'm coming with an assurance that every price for my sin was paid because the sacrifice was worth it in fact after jesus resurrected mary magdalene wanted to touch him he said don't touch me i have not yet ascended to my father because this this sacrifice has to be probed in the courts of heaven to be found worthy before sin can truly be rolled away so Jesus' sinless life has a very powerful significance as far as our salvation is concerned. His perfection made him a worthy offering for our salvation. Hebrews 4 verse 15. Hebrews 4 15. It says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was at in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin so he went through all the temptations that we have gone through and fallen <laughs> i know some of you have never fallen me i have fallen <laughs> and i've fallen many times <laughs> there was a time i told god if i'm about to sin strike me with headache so that i'll be reminded as i was coming from that place of prayer anger somebody provoked me and i rest All the religions that are claiming they will walk their way to eternity. They are joking. You know? Thank God we have a savior. Why God is perfecting us and we are growing in God. Thank God there is a sacrifice that represents us. You are deceiving yourself. My good exceeds my evil. Do you know your evil? You don't even know all. You are evil. Your thoughts are evil. The lowest evil in your life is your action. Do you know how many thoughts you think per second? Let the scientists tell you, you'll be shocked. There are some thoughts you are thinking that is not even in your consciousness. It's in you. And you stand up, you say, when I go to the judgment seat, my good, your good, even your good is a fitty rack before God. Only one was found perfect. And that's the man, Jesus Christ. So, why we receive that sacrifice, the Holy Ghost now begins to teach us and grow us to be like him. So God will reward us to the degree of our transformation, but he will save us based on Jesus, not based on us. Glory to God. John chapter 1 verse 29. <laughs> Write these scriptures down. He said, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Why was he the Lamb of God? Because he was perfect. 
the lamb of god must be without spot or blemish otherwise it can't be the lamb of god first john chapter 3 verse 5 and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin in him is no sin if there was sin in him he will lose the right to take away our sins so his sinless life is implicative and significant consequent upon us on our salvation because that was what qualified him to be the sacrifice number three why is his sinless, sinless life important his sinless life also revealed to us god's perfect will for humanity so when we see jesus apart from the fact that he gives us an example on how to live when we see jesus we can tell god's plan for man so if jesus was not sick i now know that wow so god's plan for me was not healing healing is necessary because i've not yet grown up god's plan for me is actually divine health because jesus never need needed healing when i see that jesus was never in lack he had authority to conquer lack i'll now say wow so god's plan is actually not to give me breakthrough i'm receiving breakthrough because i'm growing god's plan is actually for me to come to a point where i dominate over the affairs of life and i don't walk in lack so jesus's life reveals to us god's plan you know jeremiah said god is talking now i know my thoughts towards you they are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future you may quote that scripture but it may not be real to you it was when jesus walked on earth that that scripture was animated so jesus is a reflection of god's plan on the strength of this i can willingly surrender to god because now i know there is no plan i can have for myself that will beat what i see in the life of jesus christ so submission for me is no longer a struggle because now i know that what god wants or has in store for me is superior to what i can ever have for myself he said eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has he occurred to the heart of man the things that god has for them that love him and finally a sinless life is a revelation of victory over sin and death if jesus didn't live in this world trust me not even me i wouldn't have believed it's possible to live above sin you know the bible doctrinally the bible tells us sin shall no longer have dominion over you <laughs> when you see the power of lust on your inside and you see the elements that has been installed around you to stir that lust and lead you to sin you will almost say it is impossible even though the bible said if that same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead lives in you he will quicken your mortal body he will mortify the flesh you will quote it but kai you will tell yourself my brother no man is perfect every time you say no man is perfect jesus makes that statement a lie because his sinless life reveals to us that is possible for men to be perfect and it's not the only one that is perfect the bible said you too be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect so the reason we are striving towards perfection is because jesus showed us that it's possible and paul said in hebrews chapter 6 verse 3 he said let us go on unto perfection the apostles knew that it was possible to be perfect how were they so bold to think it because they saw it in christ so Paul will speak in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. Be ye followers of me as I am the follower of Christ. John will say, as he is, so are we in this world. So they have grown to that level where they have also been able to model the perfection that is in Christ. If Jesus did not walk the earth, you will know that it is possible to live above sin. Now we can say, don't sin. Now we can tell people, don't fall into sin. Now we can tell people, live above sin. And ourselves can by grace strive to live above sin because Jesus showed us that it is possible. If Jesus didn't leave, that doctrine would not have existed. Hmm. First Peter 2.22 NIV said, He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. It's possible. And so James now came and James 3.2 said, A man who can bridle his tongue has become a perfect man. If there was no deceit in his mouth, it means other men too can live above deceit. So the reason we know there is victory over sin is because Jesus modeled it. And that is the significance of a sinless life. Glory to God. Are you seeing the whole fact that sums up to become our experiences? These are the raw materials for a victorious Christian life. And they are all traceable to Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus is our portrait. Because it's only in him that you can find the completeness of the realities of God.